Hey, Slider Crusaders. Did you see the video of the history teacher in Los Angeles? Uh, a student was wearing a sweatshirt that said Marines on it. And this teacher just went off. We're going to link to the, uh, uh, the video in the comments here so you can watch it. But it's pretty brutal, right? Uh, insulting service members, calling them dumb blanks, dumb S-word. Uh, throwing the S-word around a ton. It's just this five, six-minute rant. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things. First, the language. You may say, oh, this is how kids talk these days. It's important to relate to them, speak their language. Nope. It's important to be a role model and set an example for how kids should talk and behave. Not to sink down to their level in this effort to relate. Like, like, it's pathetic. It's like, it's like the, the, the old guy pulling up a chair, sitting in it backwards, pulling his hat backwards, trying to relate to the, the, the young whippersnapper. You're not relating. You look like a fool who's trying too hard. So cut out with the swearing. Uh, ben Sass's book, it's an amazing book, The Vanishing American Adult. You have to read it. It's so good. Um, talks about how one of the main goals, uh, a stated goal of the modern public school system, around 1910 or so, by John Dewey. He was the, the father of the, the modern public education system. One of the goals was to transform the center of a kid's social universe um, from where it was to uh, what it is today. So for all of history, the center of a kid's life was the home. And most of their interaction, therefore, was with their parents or with other adults. And that gave them a constant source of, uh, of aspiration, a vision of the man or woman that they would want to grow up to be. So the public school came around and, and made the school the social universe of a kid's life. And, and not only that, but it became a place where kids, for the first time ever, a place where kids who wanted advice and insight and wisdom looked to other kids. And when you have 16-year-olds guiding other 16-year-olds through the trials and tribulations of life, it's not going to end well. You need adults to help guide kids into adulthood. So... Teachers shouldn't swear, shouldn't talk the kid's language because the goal is not to be a kid. It's to help your kids become adults. You be the model. You be the adult, not some grown-up 16-year-old. Anyway, quick side rant. Uh, let's go back to the main point. So do you remember in 2006 when John Kerry, who was just a senator then, he said, uh, he was speaking somewhere and he said, you need to make an effort to be smart and if you do that, you can do well. And if you don't, you get stuck in Iraq. Remember that? That man, of course, went on to become Secretary of State in our messed up world. Uh, but it's the same elitist perspective that John Kerry had and this teacher have, an elitist perspective on the military, um, saying that the military, they're just a bunch of uneducated, desperate losers. And if they were smart like me, then they would go to college. I, it's, it's honestly not even worth the time to uh, rebuke this premise. We could be here all day and, and rightfully point out people I know and you know in the military who are brilliant and, and who didn't do it as a last resort. The teacher said something like, um, you know, people in 9-11 who were in the World Trade Center and they jumped out of the building. Why do they do it? Because they were going to die anyway, so they might as well have just jumped out the building and die that way. And that's like you if you join the military. You're a worthless human being, so you decide to join the military where you'll die anyway. Like, that was his argument. Argument. Uh, we know people who join the military, not as a last resort, but because they knew that there's things in life that are worth fighting for. And this country and the values that we hold dear in this country, that's one of those things. John Stuart Mill, as he said, war is an ugly thing. There's no doubt about that. But it's not the ugliest of things. The, decay, the decayed and degraded state of moral and patriotic feelings which thinks that nothing's worth the war, is worse. A man who has nothing which he's willing to fight for, nothing which he cares more about than he does his own personal safety, is a miserable creature who has no chance of being free unless made so and kept so by the exertions of men better than himself. This teacher, he's a man kept free by men better than himself. The academic elitism bothers me. This is a, uh, there's a confusion between education and schooling in our country. 
uh, this teacher, he, he, see, we use the word education, uh, but what this teacher is really talking about and is really focused on is schooling, right? Go to college, go get more schooling. But joining the military, it's not schooling, but it gives you an education. And I'll tell you, more of an education than the education I got in my schooling, because education is all about experience. It's like the scene from Goodwill Hunting. I know you've seen the movie. It's when Robin Williams' character and, and Matt Damon are sitting on the park bench. And uh, Robin Williams says, listen, if, if I asked you about art, you'd probably give me the skinny on every art book ever written. But I bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. So you've never actually stood there and looked up at the ceiling. I'd ask you about war and you'd probably throw Shakespeare at once more into the breach, dear friends. But you've never been near one. You've never held your best friend's head in your lap and watch his gasp, his last gasp of breath, looking to you for help. I'd ask you about love and you'd probably quote me a sonnet, but you've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable and known someone that could level you with her eyes, feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you, who could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you want to know what it's like to be her angel, to have that love for her and be there forever through anything, through cancer. And you wouldn't know about sleeping, sitting up in the hospital room for two months, holding her hands because the doctors could see in your eyes that the terms of visiting hours don't apply to you. Remember that scene? That's, you don't get that from schooling. That's an education. And it comes from living. And the military gives you that. It's hard. But for thousands of years, men did hard things because they had something worth fighting for. And thank God for those men that still do it today. When... You get a lot of schooling, not always, not everyone, but you tend to look down on people who don't have as much as you, don't have as much credentials, you tend to get more close-minded. But when you have an education, you get more perspective and more empathy for others. And the more education you have, the more you can smell ignorance from a mile away. Um, I don't know what else I'd, I'd say to this teacher maybe we'd go on a walk because there's a school in the district it's called Obregon it's a K-12 school it's named after Eugene Obregon this man was born in LA joined the Marines at 17 deployed to Korea during the Korean War and during this one battle in Seoul which by the way Seoul's hosting the Olympics in a couple weeks Pyongyang is not so Obregon was a uh, ammunition carrier for a machine gun squad and he had a pistol and he saw one of his fellow marines who was shot and fell into the line of fire so with his pistol he, he runs out in the line of fire shooting for cover grabs him is able to pull him back by his arm while shooting with the other arm and pulls him back to cover and he started bandaging up uh, his, his wounds and as he was doing that the enemy came closer to the two of them so, so Eugene grabs the guy's rifle and acts as a shield covering his brother, covering this man, and starts firing at the approaching enemy. Using, again, using his body as a shield. He was shot and killed. The man he rescued survived, recovered, and stayed in the military in honor of the man who saved his life. So there's a school in this very district named after that Medal of Honor recipient. So I would argue to this teacher that schooling is, is good. Right? College is good. You read some books, learn some things. But you can't learn everything. And you can't learn the certain aspects of life. Maybe are the most important ones. Not all of us could handle a moment like that. But I'm glad some of us can. We should honor them and respect them.